Arctic Monkeys, I think, brought that poem to a new generation. Yes, didn't indeed. They? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, yeah. It's had how many, how many billion hits? Can you do? I want to be yours. Yeah, you're ready for it. I'm ready for a job. <laughs> John. Matt. How are you, mate? All right, how are you? Good to see you. I'm very well, thanks, mate. I've been to the shop. Ooh, baked goods. Popped down the co-op, got us a few little treats. I thought, because you've been in America, haven't you? I thought I'd get us some little English, UK treats. What, you think I was getting sentimental about about Blighty? Do you not miss the UK when you're away? (laughs) But no, not really. (laughs) Not one bit. Well, I'm as patriotic as the next guy, but, you know, it's nice to get away occasionally, isn't it? Yeah. How long are you in yeah. America for? Uh, four weeks. Wow. That's practically living there. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I seem that way, except uh, apart from getting a plane every other day. Wow, it's a big country, though. Yeah, it? it's a big country. Yeah, I always yeah. forget. Do you like yeah. America? You're, yeah, you're a fan, aren't you, of the culture? Fabulous, yeah, but I'd rather drive around the place. We did drive. To, we, we drove to a couple of places, and that was great. I like the nowhere places in the States, you know, you know, retail parks. A retail blue, park? Blue collar America, you know, car dealerships and retail uh, parks and all those uh, nowhere places. Yeah. You know, that fantastic. The real me. America. Yeah, yeah, fantastic for me, really great, dreamy. They went to Elvis's house. Did you? Oh, yeah, you were a massive yeah. wasn't Elvis in. fan. Was he not? <laughs> Nipped out to the shop. No, he? but seriously, it was, it was a terrific day out. Sensational, you know. I can't get enough Elvis, and uh, but there was enough Elvis. There was, <laughs> <laughs> turns out there is enough Fantastic. Elvis. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, really I've good. never really been. What's there? What can you do? At well, you know, the house is not as big as you might think, you know. But I already knew that, you know. He had it. He had it built very early in his career, you know, and. Uh, and all the, uh, all his, the, the, you know, the museum artifacts, you know, everything, you know, all his suits. They've kept it all. You know, it's all in a separate building, you know, I mean, the uh, Elvis Museum. Oh. Sort of next door, you know, they got, but they've got all his cars, his own football field. His own football field? Uh, uh, horses. You know, he used to keep horses. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like Rod Stewart, isn't he? Guys. Rod Stewart's got his own football No, he's very different to Rod in that he was extravagantly generous. <laughs> I don't think I don't think Rod has that reputation. Bit tight, <laughs> In fact, he's known for never getting around in. There's a pub, isn't there, in Los Angeles? And I think he makes a point of never buying around. He makes a point of it. Yeah. It's not like he can't afford it, though, is no, it? No, not at all. He, he, he does it for a laugh. So when you're in America, and you tour him round, do you still enjoy it as much? The travelling, the moving, the staying in hotels. Well, it's, you know, to me, it's, it's kind of work, you know, but it's a, it's a, it's a work that I uh, chose for myself, so no complaints, you know. But, uh, you know, when it comes to doing shows, if I wanted to enjoy it, I'd buy a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at work there. Yeah. <laughs> it's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. Thank God it's me. Thank God it is you. <laughs> I'd echo that. What about food and drink? Because you're into your food and drink, aren't you? Uh, yeah. You, you lo- like you like to eat nice foods. Yeah, 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 you, yeah. That's one thing about being on the road. You've got to be re- quite careful about that kind of thing, you know, uh, dietary stuff. So what do you do? How do you do it's it? A, do it's, you... a, it's, a, it's a bad time to get any kind of intestinal complaint when you're kind of getting an airplane every day. You don't want that happening. No, you don't. So it turns you into a kind of a bit of a, a bit picky about food. Yeah, yeah, I would say that I am, yeah. So, so what, when you say you're picky, what do you avoid? What do you go for? What's your idea of a good night out, a good meal out? <laughs> a good night out is a night in, like <laughs> anybody else in show business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I agree with that as well. When you're going out for food, do you like to just eat what's local to the places that you're visiting? Or you Sometimes, got... yeah, depends where I am. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. I don't eat a lot of cream, I don't eat a lot of dairy. Hence I tell not yeah, the black tea. Yeah, I don't eat. I don't, I don't take in a lot of dead, the odd bit of cheese. One of the things that I love the most about you, of all the things you've ever done, and all the poems you've ever written, oh. is, is your work with. Um, he, well, he was a hero of mine at the time. The Honey Monster. <laughs> all right. Oh yeah. You got the sugar puffs ads. Sugar puffs ads. Yeah, honestly, and I was, I was watching them again recently. They're really good. 
Yeah, yeah, they were really good. And that's before the days of uh, blue screen and, you know, you, you, it, it took three days to make a 30-second adver adver advertisement. Just explain the, the advert for me in case someone hasn't seen well, it. Well, I was the kind of the, hun the sidekick of, uh, of the Honey Monster. The Honey Monster was the main guy. Of course. And, uh, but they figured they'd get a sort of celebo kind of sidekick. Uh, involved and uh, I was the first after me they they, they did it quite a lot with uh, <coughs> once with uh, Kevin Keegan yeah. uh, and a whole bunch of other uh, kind of household names do you do like I, doing stuff like that do I like doing adverts yeah oh financially speaking it's the sweetest <laughs> plum <laughs> sure I do I pity the fool who doesn't do adverts. <laughs> in fact, I've got a whole bunch of them here. I'm glad you brought that up. I've got a whole bunch of them here that I did for a well-known insurance company, for instance. You know, and I thought, how do you sell insurance? That's like shooting fish in a barrel. They wanted, you, you know, you, you've got to scare people. The way to sell insurance is to induce a level of anxiety, if not absolutely terrifying them into it. I, <laughs> I've never, I've never uh, taken out an insurance policy in my life without it was a legal requirement, you know. So it's not a world that I know very much about. But I figured, you know, I can do this. You know, I got it over the phone. I was in America at the time when I did it, like the last time I was out there. And we were flying from Los Angeles to Portland, Oregon. And I got, I got the message, you know, we got this, uh, this gig for you, you know, will you write some jingles for this uh, well-known uh, ins insurance company? So I thought, yeah, I can, do, I can do that in my sleep, you know. I, I, what do you do? Scare people into it. So I thought I'll do a four-liner, I'll do a, you know, a three, four-liner. Finished up doing about 13 of them <laughs> on, on, on that two-hour flight. And uh, by the end of it, I thought, well, that's the easiest few grand I've ever made. Uh, you know, bring, bring it on. Anyway, when I presented them with it, they weren't interested. You know, it was, the, it was just too scary. You know, you, you're going to scare the customers off. You took it but too I, far. But, but what I said was, uh, no, I'm not taking, the, I'm not scaring the customers off. I'm scaring them on. You know, how else are you going to sell insurance? I, in fact, I asked her, you know, what business college did you attend? <laughs> that, you know, where you don't want to scare people in uh, taking out insurance. Well, how would you pitch it? So I had to rewrite the whole thing, but I'll give you some idea of uh, what they were like, for instance. Uh, there was this one. Uh, the banana peel on the high wire. The puncture in the spare tire. The danger of a deep fat fryer fire. You need insurance. <laughs> It was like that sort of thing, That's you know, gold. legitimate anxieties, you know. And then I thought, uh, busy roads and slippery steps, everywhere the citizen schleps. Have a word with one of their reps, you need insurance. <laughs> See where I'm coming from with this, frighten them into it. Here's my favourite. A piece of ice about the size of a pie hits your face from out of the sky. <laughs> That's exactly why. You need insurance. Thank you. I think that's my favourite <coughs> as well. I thought it was a, I thought it was the easiest gig I'd ever had, but it turned out to be the most in, labour intensive. In oh, really? Was it? Yeah, yeah. Minimum wage didn't work no, out as no. much. Um, so you like doing adverts? Yeah, great. I always enjoy seeing you on the television, like when you pop up on panel show. Would I lie to you? Oh, I love that. It's a Eight great show. It's a lot of fun. Would I lie to you? you? You look like you had fun. You look like you were enjoying it. It's a fun it. show. Yeah, yeah, great show. I got liar of the week once. What an accolade. Yeah, what an accolade. Because I imagine it in, in life you're probably quite an honest man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I am. Within uh, reason. Eight out of ten. <laughs> when you're on eight out of ten cats, they always tend to do, and I see this a lot actually in, in other interviews you do, where they, they feel that they need to deliver a poem to you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, do, yeah. do you enjoy those bits? Well, I don't like to kind of uh, shoot anybody. That, you know, I like to be encouraging You're when always people very write, good, yeah. po write poetry. So, uh, so uh, you know, it's a difficult piece, for, a difficult bit for me. That also, you know, they're all in the kind of verbal industry, you know, comedians oh. and whatnot. So they're, they're all pretty good at it. Yeah. So, you know, in... You know, from a self-interest point of view, uh, I hope they uh, abandon that particular sort of part of it. Because some of them, are Johnny Vegas, blimey. 
I felt, I, saw like, it. I, I felt like finding something else to do for a living after that one. It was very good, wasn't it? Oh, very, very good. It, it yeah, almost yeah. had me welling up. That exactly, yeah. That, that's it. That's what happened, you know. So it would seem churlish not to make him the winner. It, I mean, I know you like to be positive, but who's who's been the worst? Oh, I couldn't tell you yeah, that. Let's that's like they've they've all been surprisingly good. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very fair. Yeah, alarmingly, I should say. Alarmingly good. You're like the modern day teacher where, no, you're all winners yeah, today. Yeah, 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 modern, yeah, that would get me a job as a teacher, wouldn't it? Everyone, uh, all must have prizes. The standard of people on those panels is amazing. Some of the funniest people around. Yeah. But the person I miss most of all of that show, obviously, is the, is the great Sean Lock. I, I mean, I, it, to me, he was the funniest guy, uh, guy in, in the UK. Un, he, uh, unbelievable. He was great, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. So he's just totally unpredictable, you know, just a naturally very funny person. I want to talk about uh, a wedding we were both at. A mutual friend of ours last year, Siobhan's. Yes, indeed. Uh, I mean, beautiful wedding. Beautiful wedding. I think the best wedding I've yeah, ever yeah, been to, yeah. other than my own. Cracking. Um, but while, uh, during the service, you did I Want to Be Yours. Uh-huh. And I've got to say, it was, just, it, was, it was such a wonderful moment. Well, it's the wedding favourite of the 21st century. It is, isn't it? Sure as hell is. It, it's become one of the most, I was going to say love songs, but love poems. Yeah, absolutely. One of the most yeah. popular ones. Every Saturday in the summer months, you know, I'm usually working and we always, whatever hotel we're staying in, there's usually a wedding going on and, uh, and, and invariably they've used that uh, poem as part of their uh, modern wedding ceremony. Do you, do you get a lot of requests? Do you get people writing to you saying, we're getting married in December, will you come and perform that poem? I do get those requests. I bet you do, yeah. yeah. And how do you respond to them, John? Well, uh, thanks anyway, but I'm working on that occasion, yeah. yeah. Because I do tend to work most weekends, in, uh, especially in, those, in the summer months. Arctic Monkeys, I think, brought that poem to a new generation. Yes, indeed, they? yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, yeah. It's had how many, how many billion hits on uh, one of those streaming things. Don't get me involved in this. It's an area I know nothing about, as you know. Streaming, I think it's pretty much the, an artist can get billions of streams and not very much money. No, you, nothing. But you know, to, but to be uh, to be uh, to have that many people aware of what you do is it's uh, amazing. Well, again, a mitzvah. Did Did you see a, a positive impact from that poem being published as a song? Did you see a sudden uptake in younger people coming to your gigs? Or more books being sold? Oh, absolutely! You know, my my uh, fans are a, they're a they're a trans generational crowd. You know, they're all kind of people, all kind of ages, show out for my gigs now, and uh, and I, I think that's I think the Arctic Monkeys doing that uh, that number has, uh, has certainly helped out in that direction. But I certainly do have a trans generational audience. You can put the hours in with a poem sometimes, and then you get one that kind of, once you've got the angle, it writes itself, you know, and, and that's certainly true of uh, I Want to Be Yours. Like your insurance poems. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just do you on a roll now. Yeah, yeah. Um, your new book out this year. That's right. Uh, what? What? How's that been received? Very well. Yeah. Very well, yeah. Soon, it'll be soon out in paperback, so if you want to save a few bob. Yeah. The memoir, also known as uh, I Want to Be Yours. Of course. That's doing all right. Can you do I Want to Be Yours? Yeah, I can certainly do that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then, should we have a bit of that? Yeah, you ready for it? I'm ready for it, John. Let me be your vacuum cleaner breathing in your dust. Let me be your Morris Marina, I will never rust. If you like your coffee hot, let me be your coffee pot. You call the shots. I want to be yours. Let me be your raincoat for those frequent rainy days. Let me be that dream boat when you want to sail away. Let me be your teddy bear. Take me with you anywhere. I don't care. I want to be yours. Let me be your electric meter. I will never run out. Let me be the electric heater. You get pneumonia well out. Let me be that setting lotion that grips your skull with deep devotion, deep as the deep Atlantic Ocean. That's how deep is my devotion. Deep, 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 deep. I don't want to be hers. I want to be yours. I want to be yours, John Cooper Clark. I love it. Also the title of my memoir. Yeah. Well, why not? People know you for it now, don't That's they? That's it, man. You're about to embark on a, a, an arena tour. 
in the UK. Uh huh. You're coming to the Corp Live. That's right. That's going to be exciting. Yeah. Um, how do you think poetry translates into such huge spaces? I have no idea. This is a uh, this is very much. Although I have uh, performed in front of eighteen thousand before before you know and. Uh, in the States, I, uh, I d d did a little bit before the Arctic Monkeys, a uh, 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 sports arena in Queens, wow. uh, New York. I was amazed that anybody had, uh, even knew who I was over there, you know, uh, at that point, because they were an exclusively uh, young audience. I think it'll be great. I think that the people are going to love it. I, I well, just wonder, I mean, is for you, if there's, there's a, a, a difference between doing an intimate gig. Well, you? that's it. You know, I mean, it's a, it's a very kind of intimate medium poetry. You yeah. know, and uh, well, I recently did one. Uh, the last gig I did in, in the States uh, a few three, three or four days ago was uh, San Francisco. And that was a kind of outdoor festival in 90 degree heat. Oh, so, Jesus. You know, that was uh, I hope you took that, that coat off. Oh, I can't, you can't do that. Standards, mate, standards. You like your fashion, don't you? Well, I like, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a careful dresser, if that's what you mean. I do mean, yeah, careful dresser's a nice yeah, way of looking at yeah. it. And I love, I'm not sure if any of the cameramen could pick this up, but your boots today. You're getting the boots in, huh? They're special, John. Jeffrey West. Where do you go shopping? Where do you, because you've got a very specific look. Well, that's nice of you to say so. Where do you go? Where do you shop? Uh, I don't go shopping very much, you know. what? I'm in the habit of having a look after my clothes because until kind of top shop and H and M, you couldn't get you couldn't get a coat my size. You know, I'm an extremely uh, slender person, and uh, so any time I've ever found a, a coat that uh, that fits me right, I've uh, I've treated it like a precious object. You know, so a lot of my clothes are extremely old. You know, so I, I don't go shopping for new clothes all the time. Uh, quite the reverse, but uh, Jeffrey West, you know, uh, Guy West, the guy who's responsible for these boots, for instance, I was introduced to his stuff by my tailor, uh, Tom Baker. So, you know, I don't really go shopping for clothes, I only really buy shirts and under sh shirts, socks and underwear, you know, uh, I've, I've got my tailor and uh, and uh, a few odd pieces from a place called Private White. Oh, I know Private White. Who started out, out in Salford uh, at the end of the uh, First World War. Yeah, they, they've still got a factory there in, in the old mill. Have they? Yeah, where they, I, they still I didn't make... know they were, still had a presence here. Yeah, they, they, they still make a... all their clothes here. Well, their shop is in uh, Duke Street in, uh, in the West End there, you know, just opposite uh, Selfridges. Yeah, they're good Right guys. next door to the place where Robert Fraser had his uh, legendary art gallery. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a nice part of town. It does good stuff. Now, you're teaming up with the co-op and you've written a poem about Co-op Live called Proper Sound. Yeah. yeah, I did a good job on that, I think. Again, it was very labour intensive. Mm. Oh, by the way, the co-op also does insurance, doesn't it? So uh, if they need any of these rejected... Yeah, but I'm sure uh, there's someone these here. ...rejected things, you know, reasonable rates. <laughs> Just saying. How reasonable is reasonable though, John? Well, you know, that's a, that's a sliding scale. Okay. Isn't it? We'll have to talk about that when the cameras aren't running. More than a cup of tea and a slice of Victoria sponge. <laughs> so you've actually teamed up with a co-op, haven't you, and written a poem about the co-op live. Um, but, I mean, look, it's impressive, isn't it? It's well, a great I'll, building. I'll say it in one word. Luxury. And it's uh, purpose built, you know, it's not a kind of modified sports arena, it's, uh, it's uh, specifically for music and, uh, and also I'm doing a, you know, I'm not a musician, but I'm doing a show here in March. You like it so much? I liked it so much, I, uh, I didn't buy the company, but I got a gig out of it. And that's all that matters? What, what, can, what more can I say? So that's next I'm year, talking. isn't it, in March? That's, that's in March, yeah, the end of March, no, 29th. What can people expect from your arena show? Well, more of the same, and then some. Are you going to do the poem for us, John? Sure thing, yeah, why not? Uh, through pea soup fog on clippery clogs, back in the days of outdoor bogs, where to go for your Sunday togs when it's raining cats and dogs? Why shop around when you could pop around to shop in a shop that's proper sound? Since a pound note was a proper pound, a town is not a proper town without the old co-op around. Proper sound. 
Now there's a proper sound Manchester gig. It's gonna flip your wig, it's purpose built. Can you dig it with a planet friendly lighting rig? It's the business that's really big on proper sound. For lovers rock and do what, bebop and K-pop, trip hop, disco and what's opera duck. Head up north to co-op live. It ain't too long a drive. It's gonna help this new generation thrive. Oh yeah, co-op live with the full communitarian vibe. We stand on common ground. When music is the main event and you get rhythm bound, make the scene at this new arena that's co-op live. Proper sound. I love it. John, that's great. There was no more. And, and I'm worried for you a little bit because what rhymes with co-op? Well, yeah, there you are. Uh, uh, it's the orange of the supermarket yeah, world, isn't it? Think of it? Yeah, the orange, very well put. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks very much for talking to us, John. A, pr a privilege. Thank you very much, Matt. How was your tea? It's terrific. Is it? Yeah. So, happy days. Good to meet you, man. <laughs> nice to talk. Nice one. Well, that ended just in time, didn't it? Just, is that the end credit song? 